All right, so this is official U.S. PlayStation Magazine demo disc number 39. Going back in time a little bit for this one. I was attempting, anyway, to try to play these in the order of release, but I kind of dropped the ball on that one because I haven't been able to find all of the discs. I went and did a PlayStation 2 one. Now I'm back to a PlayStation 1 disc. I'm sort of stumbling across them, you know, randomly. So this was from 2000, a very uh, late-gen PlayStation 1. PS1 continued on for a number of years after this, but it really wasn't the focus of anything. Oh, the Emperor's New Groove. Friggin' a David Spade Disney movie. You know, I didn't remember having this disc. Long ago, but now I do. <laughs> There was a prosperous kingdom ruled by a young emperor. Oh, yeah! Boom, baby! He had a serious attitude. You threw off my groove. I'm sorry, but you've thrown off the emperor's groove. Sorry! An evil advisor. By the way, you're fired. All right, yeah, I'm definitely going to get flagged if I keep showing this. <laughs> this is an SCEA game, huh? Anyway, I didn't remember this demo disc until I saw this here, because I remember now, I didn't watch the movie Emperor's New Groove until like a year or two after it had released. And then, but before that, I had played this demo disc, and I remembered being a little bit confused as like, what the hell am I playing as a llama or whatever? <laughs> This was well past the point, in the PlayStation 1 era anyway, where the demo discs drew a lot of attention from me. Uh, am I looking at another? Yeah, loading screen. So, before, I've said this a hundred times, or however, however many ep- Alright, so that is something that's unfortunately going to happen. I tried adjusting my settings, but I couldn't get the game to run. It didn't crash or anything, it just wouldn't run properly. The, I've said this a number of times, it's, I don't run these games on the original hardware anymore. I don't even have a PlayStation 1 anymore. Mine broke a long time ago. So I run this in the EPSXE emulator, and it's not as accurate as actual hardware, or even as accurate as a PS2 or PS3 playing PS1 games. So it's bound to have some errors. Plus, there's also the fact that when doing an emulator as complex as a PlayStation 1 emulator, you're gonna want to adjust settings depending on what game you're playing. There are optimal settings for each game. Some things work great with certain resolution boosters, others don't. And in the case of a demo disc, you have a lot of games that are all clustered together, so you're not gonna find optimal settings for everything. Unless you go and change it per game, which no one's gonna do. Uh, there's also the fact that demo discs tend to contain pre-release versions of a game. I mean, it, demos would release like a month or two before the uh, the actual game would release, or even if it released as a game released. The code for the demo would have to be locked in for publication through the magazine beforehand, so... You're looking at a beta version of the game anyway, so bug fixes tend to be not implemented. So, Madden 2001. I know there were a lot of football games in the area. It's not like nowadays where pretty much Madden is everybody's go-to. But back then, there was more than just John Madden football. There tended to be... Um, I don't know, there was the 989 games, and there was NFL Blitz, and there was a lot of this other stuff. You know, I didn't realize for the first, like, five years that the initials for <laughs> this channel were MLG. And that 
is uh, the same initials as Major League Gaming. <laughs> it wasn't until I ran into a kid, he, he, uh, he worked for me. Um, I'm not going to give his name or anything, but he was a small-time Major League Gaming. Uh, he played, uh, what was it, Call of Duty. And he referred to it as MLG. I'm like, wait a sec, huh? <laughs> oh, now I get it. I am really bad at these games. The only one that I ever really got into at all was Blitz. Because Blitz was uh, insane. <laughs> yeah, this, this play is not going to work. Definitely a different era here. Because, you know, the... Uh, oh, that was a terrible terrible idea. There's a lot of slowdown in this, too. But, um, the characters all have weird chunky chunky character models, but there's surprisingly good texturing on this. Now, consider this a huge change from the um, early PlayStation 1 games, which honestly perhaps could have perhaps could have passed for a like an SNES game in a lot of ways and by that I mean the players on the field the players on the field oh shit I don't know how to pass <laughs> I thought the circle button would have done it it didn't <laughs> In the early PlayStation 1 era, you had the football games where all the characters were sprites. Now, I mean, they're not technically sprites in the sense of, like, the old school drawing mode. But there were some sprites in the sense that they were 2D objects. They probably were actually, uh, what is it, four vertices and five lines or so with a texture. Oh, uh, no! <laughs> oh, shit. That is terrible. I am terrible at this. I wasn't even paying attention before. The uh, the quarterback handed off, was didn't he, in the last play. That's why he couldn't pass. I'm an idiot. But anyway, there were 2D sprites that all the players were. So, I mean, it looked decent enough. And the, the field was fully 3D, unlike an SNES game. Though, that doesn't really make a difference with the football field, because it's... Doesn't really make a difference with the football field, because it's all flat, but the arena, the stadium, rather, around you, is in 3D. Well, anyway, the, uh... I guess, maybe it started with Blitz. That's the first one I remember. That started using 3D character models for all of the players. And perhaps that's not even true. I see some of the characters aren't... Some of the characters are low-res textures. It looks like... I don't know if you can see my uh, mouse pointer. Because I can't either. Never mind. But, the, okay, some of the players in the back over there... Come across like they might have turned into simpler models with 2D textures and stuff. But anyway, low poly 3D characters and then you uh, do some good texture mapping like they're they're really weird looking. They had like these oversized upper bodies even for guys wearing football pads, but anyway. <laughs> Happy holidays. When did this come out? Matt Hoffman Pro BMX. This very much following the popularity of the Tony Hawk Pro Skater series. You had Tony Hawk come out, and that gave these game developers this idea in their heads that, well, you know, there's all of this, there's all of this interest in these kind of X game sports, BMX 
motocross. Um, motocross isn't really an X game thing, but you know what I mean. A non-traditional sport. And I mean, look at this. This is basically just Tony Hawk. And I mean, it was Activision. It's Tony Hawk on a bike. Whoa, dude. You magic your ass back onto that bike. I'm sure somebody liked this. I didn't. Tony Hawk was my... Uh, Tony Hawk was what I liked. And yeah, sure, this is basically Tony Hawk over again. But I can't figure it out. What the hell am I doing? <laughs> I'm going to give this guy brain damage. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how to do any of the tricks on this. He, I was going to say, he doesn't pedal. It's got to be relying on the same game engine as Tony Hawk. And it looks very much like Tony Hawk, which means by this point, it actually looks really good for a PlayStation 1 game. Lots of good texturing, lots of rounded surfaces. Oh, look, bunny hop. Freeze. Okay. It's been a long time since I played a Tony Hawk game, either. Probably the last time I did a DDT episode of the Tony Hawk game. Just this kind of stuff, you know, I don't... I remember this surviving, this genre of game, surviving into the PlayStation 2 era. Now, of course, Tony Hawk, like Tony Hawk Underground, everybody remembers those. But I don't remember, like... Pro BMX games. I remember games like Street Skater and stuff like that. But these weird Tony Hawk offshoots. What is this thing? Is that a time thing? Ah, whatever. Get up there, bro. Get off the bike and walk. <laughs> oh, that was terrible. <laughs> Best combo. One trick. Oh, no, I'm not doing that again. Can't have these episodes be too long by spending a lot of time on any one game. Oh, I can do, uh, course, uh... Was that a Tony Hawk thing, too? Custom courses? Alright. Come on, loading screen. <laughs> You're letting me down. Loading a save state to, state to get out of that. MTV Sports Pure Right. You know what? Maybe I was wrong about the way I described that earlier. Maybe Tony Hawk wasn't the originator of these kind of um, alternative sports. Maybe it was the snowboarding games. You know, you had cool borders and stuff like that. This game, I don't remember at all. MTV Interactive. What is this? I mean, I remember MTV being a publisher of some games. I don't know if they developed anything. But I remember MTV being a publisher. Yeah, okay. Hey, Nate, Miko, Damien, whatever. Was this demo on an earlier disc? Because this comes across as familiar. Oh, the frame rate is terrible. Is the game going to play like that? Alright, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that the frame rate was actually a lot better in the on an actual PlayStation. Because the soundtrack isn't playing right either. God, I hope this isn't licensed music. <laughs> get up, get moving. What I really should be doing is splitting my uh, commentary track onto different audio channel and an audio file, and then so when I edit this video down, I can mix, I can mix audio uh, better. Because anytime we're 
licensed audio gets thrown and YouTube just pitches a freaking fit. Maybe it might not because the audio is so screwed up because the game is running at a low frame rate, but it's not dropping frames. So the game is just running slow. Now, since it's Sony PlayStation's uh, sample-based music uh, formats don't really play nice with that kind of thing. It's not like nowadays where you have just a straight-up audio file that it played. That like a PlayStation 3 or 4 or 5 or Xbox 360 or whatever would play. What it did was it went and saved audio samples and then played them back almost with like a MIDI style interface. So you would have the audio sample and then you would have the actual like music file in the game just tell you what samples to play and then like pitch and all that kind of stuff. Which works great for sort of like procedural music or whatever. But when it comes down to actual like music like this, that's not quite CD quality audio and all of that, but you know, good enough. The problem comes in situations like this when it's every time it stalls out like that, you hear it stud uh, stutter is because it's jumping you mean I didn't get that thing it goes and it it's running slow so that music sample audio sample that it loaded up to play hits the end of its run and the next one isn't ready yet because the game has not reached the point of execution where whoa what the fuck <laughs> hasn't reached the point of execution where the next audio sample will start playing come on Miko start moving faster So it reaches the end of its current audio sample, but the code hasn't reached the point of execution where you're going to start uh, playing the next audio sample. Because it has to be timed pretty well, pretty uh, accurately for this to work properly. And in this case, it's not. The emulator is just running too slow. So you get these weird stutters where it stops and then suddenly starts up again. Uh, I'm not... AAA. My name is AAA. That was a bad experience. <laughs> there was an MTV snowboarding game I think I played in an earlier episode, but it wasn't this one. Wasn't this one. You know, I've yet to run into anything that I feel like I can make the intro animation out of. Is this going to have to be one of those ones where the animation doesn't have jack crap to do with the games on the disc? Like, I doubt I'm going to stumble across a 3D model for Emperor's New Group. Oh, Star Wars. Star Wars. That's it. <laughs> I can always get Star Wars stuff. Always get Star Wars stuff. You know, I remember seeing a video of this on a previous disc and believing that, um... and believing that I didn't play this game before. So clearly I only ever played it once. You know, I'm having performance issues here. I'm gonna... I'm gonna adjust the emulator. I don't want to repeat of what happened with that... Don't want to repeat of what happened with that last demo. Alright, it's running much better with the new settings. Actually, I changed it back to the way I had it before. And... Probably should have kept it that way. Oh my god, look at that thing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, okay. So is this a vehicle combat game? Like a Twisted Metal or a Vigilante 8 kind of thing? That's a yes. <laughs> it's definitely not like a car combat game in the sense of like a kart racer. 
I don't know how to shoot. <laughs> Shit, you know what? I do remember this demo now. I don't know how to shoot. I'm pressing every damn button. Oh, you would have died there. <laughs> I do remember this demo now. Oh, there we go. Oh my god, the shooting is bad. I'm killing this guy. Those are the guys that stole R2. <laughs> The AI in this is remarkably stupid. That thing's not even trying to fight back. Either that or it's not something I'm supposed to be shooting. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. Are you going to die or what? Alright, never mind. I'm killing you. Oh, that one's trying to fight back. You know, there were two... There, Car Combat was definitely a fad. Now, I remember they did Twisted Metal Black. And then there was... There was a Twisted Metal game on the PlayStation 3 that I don't think I played. But, you know, as much as people were excited to see, like, Oh, Twisted Metal's back! I don't think people actually cared. And you don't see Car Combat games anymore. You know, this, this fucker is the reason why I remember this demo at all now. I remember crashing into this thing and thinking it looked ridiculous. That's got to be the thing out of... Uh, oh, am I stuck? Oh, now you decided to start fighting back. Die, damn it. What is your deal? Oh, okay. AAT battle tank destroyed. I can just sit here and park while your stupid ass swerves around. Oh, this is a bad game. <laughs> they charge people money for this. <laughs> oh, whatever that was, I wanted it. <laughs> I mean, I'd say it doesn't look terrible, but, you know, graphics aren't everything. There's gotta be different weapons, right? Come on. <laughs> Die. <laughs> Die, damn it. Die already. <laughs> oh, did I get him? Not quite. Almost. Oh, nope. He repaired him. Nope. He's not repaired anymore. <laughs> Jeez. So much blowing up I gotta do. Oh! It's the sand vagina! <laughs> oh, I'm invisible now. Awesome. I hope that works out for me. <laughs> oh! He can see me! What? This invisibility is useless. <laughs> oh, I have a charge up that I can use. Oh, shit. I should have been doing that the whole time. Okay, so... 
Ah, oh, somebody else is here. And I just went through a wall. And swoop destroyed. Hey, I won. <laughs> that was a, a, a giant thing. <laughs> what did I call these things? Oh, it's trying to get away. <laughs> And then we go when we're over. <laughs> that was that was not good. Coming fall two thousand, you can keep it. Not every Star Wars game was a winner, folks. Can't all be Knights of the Old Republic. I hear they're giving a remake of that. I saw a uh, short trailer on like the PlayStation blog. So, one hundred and two Dalmatians, huh? Was there a 102 Dalmatians movie? Oh, this is just a video. Good, because I kind of don't want to play this. <laughs> Was there a 102 Dalmatians movie? There must have been if I'm looking at it. Or maybe just the game was called 102 Dalmatians. <sighs> that was a terrible movie. I hate that movie. I hadn't seen it since I was a kid, but I remember hating it when I was a kid. The animation in it was so bad that the friggin' compressed uh, JPEG video on a PlayStation 1 of friggin' crappy polygon graphics looks better than the animation in that friggin' movie. It's like, who the hell wants to make... Uh, okay, so... In case you're not aware, the plot of this movie involves a whole bunch of Dalmatian puppies that were kidnapped by some crazy woman who wants to make a coat out of them. So, okay, think about that for a second. She shows up at some event wearing her freaking Dalmatian jacket. He goes, oh, that's nice. What's that made out of? It's made out of dog. <laughs> yeah, it's a dog fur coat. I could be wrong, but I don't think there's a huge market for dog fur. <laughs> I think maybe people might have been misinterpreting the market for the PlayStation when they started making games like a Muppet racing game. Perhaps the N64 might have been a better market for this. Their, its audience tended to skew a little bit younger. Oh, that's creepy. Jeez. What we need is another cart race, or another fad of the era, which has survived on in some fashion. I mean, the Mario Kart series is still going on strong. But all of the other add-on racers, you don't really see those anymore, do you? I mean, it's a shame, though, because there were... It wasn't just Mario Kart and everyone else had garbage. There were a number of other racing games, uh, kart racers, that are actually really good. Like, there was that um, Crash Team Racing. Now, was there a remake of Crash Team Racing recently? Well, anyway, Crash Team Racing was good. That, that freaking Chocobo racing game was actually pretty good, too. Then you had the racing-ish games, like... Um, was it scars or something? I don't know. Alright, so we're back to here. I'm going to try this one more time. And I doubt it's going to work. I don't want to play it. But, you know, for the sake of the sake of the episode. No, 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 no. Skip, 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 skip. Okay. <laughs> don't want Disney seeing that shit. Um, all right, so we did see this before. Oh, 
Oh, look at that. I remember that name. I don't remember what anything they did. It was a, a uh, I forget what the old fairy tale was that it was ripping off, but it was the emperor is a dick. He gets turned into a goat or some shit, and then he has to make his way back with the help of some asshole played by John Goodman. Okay, this is definitely not right. Skipping over that, apparently. Oh, he's a llama. Okay, alright. Yeah, I get it. I don't need to see any of this. Is this the game menu? It's the menu, wasn't it? It just wasn't loading properly.